Um, now, question 12 is a little bit more interesting, so let me at least um, answer that. I mean, the, the, um, the answer itself is simple. If you read it, it says, a cube whose sides are of length d is placed in a uniform electric field of magnitude, some magnitude, so that field is perpendicular to two opposite faces of the cube. What is the net flux through the cube? The moment you saw the word uniform electric field, um, your answer should be zero. It's kind of supposed to be simple thing. <laughs> now, the thing I want to go through is um, why it's zero. Because um, it's questions like this that can unexpectedly get people, um, unex be unexpectedly tricky because this is the kind of question where if you understood, if you understood everything well, then <laughs> you get the answer in, in a couple seconds or however long it takes you to answer, uh, read the question. But, you know, the question is written in a way to deliberately mislead you into overthinking it. Like it gives you the length of D, gives you, so. Anyway, so let me just, let me just take this a couple minutes to describe why when you have uniform electric field, that would uh, almost uh, lead you automatically to say, yeah, the net flux through a closed surface is zero. So imagine a space filled with uniform electric field. You can form it in many different ways. One easy practical way to do this is through a two infinite uh, plane of charges. Um, one positive, one negative, that can produce a uniform electric field in the region between them. That's one way. Uh, however you made it, it doesn't matter. The thing that's important is that it's uniform. And so the question describes a cube, but it doesn't have to be a cube. It can be basically any closed surface. It could be a sphere for all that the question matters. And when you have a, so this doesn't apply only to uniform electric fields, but especially for uniform electric fields, you can figure this out, uh, especially for uniform electric field and cubic shape. So let me redraw this. You can figure this out actually even in detail that net flux should be zero. You can, uh, kind of think through this. So let me draw a cube here. Here's one surface, which is perpendicular to the electric field going through. And here's the other surface that's also perpendicular to the electric field going through. And to complete the cube, I just connect the sides to make a cube. So when you look at this picture, this is what I want you to uh, be familiar enough with thinking about that on this outgoing side with the electric field perpendicular to the surface, the electric flux through this surface will be the electric field times the area that's a positive. That's the convention that we use for closed surfaces that the no surface is normal for the surface is um, uh, in a direction out, outward, in a direction outward to the surface. Now, the same, same convention means that for this surface here, the surface normal points to the left. So the, when you calculate the flux through this uh, uh, area, that's gonna be minus electric field times A, this will be less than zero. So you can see with these two surfaces that those two contributions to the net flux will cancel out. So these two combined will give zero total electric flux. And when you look at the flux through the side surfaces, then flux through the side surfaces are just zero because electric field is parallel to the surface not going through. So with the cube especially, you can work this out um, actually in detail. Now, where, you, where I want you to build up your intuition from there is it goes even more than that. You could even have a field that's uh, um, 
the field that is a bearing over space, the, this is where I want to be careful. I don't want to simply state that, you know, electric field is, I don't know, E naught uh, X over X naught. Like, I don't want to do that because that'll probably result in the field having a property where th there should be some enclosed charge. So I don't want to do that. But if I start out with a charge distribution, like if I'm thinking of a electric field due to a point charge, then a point charge would produce electric fields that are bearing um, over space, as in these electric fields, they go as one over R squared. And if you imagine placing any object within this volume, like a sphere, but you know, make sure the sphere doesn't include a charge. Then when you compute the net electric flux through the disclosed surface, you should get zero. And we went through this, I think on, I think we went through this, oh, we started going through, well, I'm sorry, the dates are kind of jumbling in my head. I think we went through a part of this on Wednesday and what the really helpful intuition here involves your intuition about the electric field line. So with, so with a picture like uh, watching this question here, you can just do the calculation and get zero, <laughs> either in a couple seconds or in a couple minutes, either way you can get it. Um, it's in a picture like this one where the intuition helps because here with the intuition, you can see that for a picture like this, for every electric field line that comes in, then it goes out. Every electric field line that comes in, then it goes out. So the, as far as the net flux contribution goes, those two contributions cancel out. That's why the net flux is zero. And um, at this point, I probably shouldn't do much more than um, uh, much more than just to mention this term and the idea, because <laughs> if you are taking math three scene right now, you haven't quite gotten this far yet. Um, the reason, especially in the hint, I say that um, that what's uh, important to hear is the uniform electric field. Frankly, for any closed surface, not just the cube where you can do detailed calculation, but even if it were sphere is it has to do with this uh, feature of uniform electric field that if it's you have a if you have a uniform vector field um, electric field is an example of vector field if you have a uniform vector field it's a divergence less vector field or it's a in the region where it's uniform it is divergence less. <laughs> and it's that uh, feature of that vector field being divergence less that leads to the, the net electric flux um, being zero. And uh, so, you know, in your math 3C, you will cover the divergence theorem and you'll, and uh, I hope to bring this back at the end of the semester where, so right now we are using integral forms of later on what we are going to call Maxwell's equations the equations that you have seen so far, they are the, um, they are the integral forms of these equations. They have a, a differential form. And uh, what connects the differential form to the integral form is what you will see in math 3C. So I want you to say that, that's why I want you to cover this question. But in terms of answering it, you can do it in, um, in a couple of seconds. <laughs>